today, our second guest is uh, Warren Phyllis-Kirk. Uh, Warren is the director of our mortgage finder business. Uh, Warren has more than 20 years of international residential and commercial lending experience. And he re relocated to the UAE in 2006 as one of the early pioneers of the UAE mortgage industry and is now considered a, a leading authority in that industry. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Warren. Hi, Stuart. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. Uh, so we have a lot of questions, so I'll get stuck straight in. Um, with the new higher loan to values uh, currently in the market, is do you see this as a major factor for clients choosing uh, their mortgage? Absolutely, yes. We're seeing um, the majority of clients um, uh, choosing the higher loan to value, but obviously it is only for first time buyers, which is, in, which is still encouraging the fact that uh, the market's busy with, with these type of clients. Um, it hasn't been taken up by all the banks. It is, um, there is a perception that every single bank is doing this and it, that's not the case. It is a choice for the banks to, um, to allow this extra lending. Um, and with certain banks, they're having, adding certain caveats to the lending criteria to, to, to protect themselves, what they feel because obviously they're taking more risk with lending uh, a higher loan to value. Um, but generally it's been widely accepted and um, clients are, are looking at this a lot. It's a positive step for the industry then really moving forward. Um, the second question is, with so many banks offering mortgages, why should a client use a mortgage broker? Yeah, good question. Um, there's, there is many banks in the market that they are um, you know, very prevalent with their advertising, etc. So we get asked this question ourselves by every client we'll generally speak to. Um, but the, the answer is, it's, it's cutting, we work for the client, we don't work for the bank. A bank is there to uh, sell their product solely, that's their mission. Whether it's a good product or a bad product or a relevant product or correct for the client, they're just there to sell that one product. Um, where we are working from the client side of the desk to ensure that the product choice is, is given to the clients impartially, and that they choose the, the one that's best for them. And where we guide them, whether it be the, the term of the loan, the interest rate, specifics on whether they want an interest only side of things um, or the fees. It's all about what the client needs. And we tail, tailor that individually for the client and do all the legwork across 23 plus banks in the market. Yeah, great. So a bespoke approach really to the individual customer is, is important. So, so with that in mind, um, how can non-residents who are obviously not uh, you know, aware of the current mortgage market in the UAE secure mortgages in the current situation? Good question. It, it, the the non-resident sector is a big, big part of the market. Certainly in the off-plan sales, so we've seen a lot of residents that we're dealing with. Now, we're, we're facing a situation currently whereby we can get non-residents to pre-approve this, um, and we could even instruct valuations and do all this remote. But then once we get to that point, we do come to, to a block whereby there needs to be a physical presence in the UAE to sign certain documents and do certain things with the, with the banks, such as opening in accounts. Um, so at the moment, we can only take it so far. Um, we're working, discussing with the banks if this is going to be lifted and, uh, and and changed in any way in the future and once we do know that we will communicate that to uh, to all our client partners um to advise and what steps can be taken to do this okay um final question there's more coming for you in the q a but final question of this section um looking at the data that you have access to at mortgage finder have you seen a difference in the type of client inquiries and uh, what sector of the market is moving the most we have seen, we've seen the high-end buyers in the market seem to have increased uh, in an opportunist way. So they're looking at maybe looking at deals that weren't there previously. Um, we've seen a, a steady maintenance of the mid-range market, low to mid-range markets, but we feel those clients won't be generally making the decision right now. It's going to be a longer time. They've, they've got the pre-approval. They're going to wait. They're going to look. They want to be ready. Um, but they're still looking at it. But we're seeing a, a higher closure rate in the higher loan, so the higher value properties, where there's real deal seekers basically at the moment. Okay, interesting. Uh, thank you, Warren. As I mentioned, we're going to come back to you shortly in the Q and A. But I'm going to hand back over to Lynette now. 
Thank you, Stuart and Warren. Um, information on the mortgage market is super important as well. Uh, and I wanna thank you for sharing great insights with us today. Uh, next slide, please. So now is time for our Q&A. Uh, I think you guys heard me typing. I was typing some questions that you guys have sent through, so sorry about that. Um, I would like to start uh, with Warren. Um, we have a lot of mortgage questions here. Sure. So are the banks financing transfer fees as well? Yes, they, there's a number of banks, four in total, that have been financing um, transaction costs for probably over about 18 months now. Um, so they will. So now that has increased. So the the, the lower price property, they'll do eighty percent of the property purchase price and eighty percent of the four the four percent transfer, two percent agency fees, and also some ancillary fees such as the the mortgage registration and trustee office fees. So it's giving an overall lending capacity to about eighty five and a half percent now, which is which is excellent for first time buyers um, to to get into the market. Now, what, what's the average interest rate that you're seeing in, with the products in the market? For a three-year fixed rate, which is, is generally the, 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 the term that most clients would want to look, a bit of stability, three years, it's 2.99 um, is, the, is the mean. Several banks that are offering that. Um, there's rates lower than that, but they'll generally be only for one year. There could be 2.6, 2.7. Um, if you go above three years, then it's sort of creeping up to three and a half, four, four percent. And there's, there's one bank with a 10 year deal at 3.99, uh, which looks fantastic. It'd be, you know, three months ago, not so much now because clients are thinking, well, that's 25 percent more than I, I'd like to pay because <laughs> they're seeing the 2.99 very well marketed by the banks across the boardroom. This, it seems like it's the lowest since the last 15 years, I think, the interest rates. I've been in the industry here 15 years. That's the lowest I've, I've, I've seen these rates by a significant amount. So it's it's cut the cost of your monthly mortgage by 20 20%, 25%. So um, it is really making the cost of buying if you're in the market really, really affordable. Certainly when you compare that to renting, absolutely. Extremely attractive, absolutely. Um, we, we actually have a question from one of the remarks that you, it was actually the last uh, question that you answered for Stuart. Um, you mentioned that you're closing higher, higher closing rate for higher price range. What price range are you referring to? If you could just give a range. I mean, above the 5 million mark, basically. That, that was a sector of the market that we found was really quite slow um, in, in, in previous months or previous years even because of the lower loan to values and situation in the market. And we're seeing over the last two months, there's been a lot of activity, people that may have been looking at certain areas in the market that have come down slightly, and also their buying power has gone up 5% with the changes to the loan to value. So they're thinking, okay, now is the time. So we've seen quite a few um, clients coming in, getting pre-approval in readiness, and, and literally those deals starting to transact now. Um, we're seeing the MOUs come in. So it's it's that sector's moving now finally. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, maybe I think it was three webinars ago, we were reporting that there was an increase in searches and leads for uh, high, higher price properties, so price, so properties over 5 million dirhams. Um, and when uh, I saw that stat, I did a little bit of research, um, and it seemed like this is a, a, a trend that was um, across the world. Um, so basically, you have these high net worth individuals who are looking for high price properties, and now they're just looking for a really good deal. So obviously, you know, pro properties that have been reduced, maybe uh, we have some uh, distressed properties, um, but this is a trend that we were also seeing in the US and the UK. So it's, it's very, very interesting. And very Absolutely. good insight for our clients, yeah. Um, change of um, where you had a client that maybe going to buy cash, you know, he's, he's off, bought our plan, final payment was gonna be cash. Now to decide, actually, no, I'd like to, I'd like to take finance for that payment now because rates have come down, they're more favorable. They might have better use for that cash now within their businesses. So it's, there's different reasons. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so we have, again, a lot of questions regarding mortgages and from uh, your previous statements. Um, one question is 85.5% for expats. What does that translate to, to local clients? This is in regards to what you were speaking to earlier. An additional 5%. An additional 5%, okay. And then are banks offering uh, waiving off processing fees, valuation fees? Is this happening now? We've seen um, a number of banks have had zero processing fees in place anyway as a 
as a promotion in the current situation. And then we've seen other banks, because of the, the start of Ramadan, um, discount the, the valuation fees by 50% and reduce the, the arrangement fees also. So um, from an entry point and a long-term rate point of view, it's the best it's ever been. Really. No, that's very good. Um, okay, well, last question for you, uh, Warren. Um, this is a question that has come up quite a bit since the, the lockdown has eased. So for people who were do, going the digital route um, with the registration trustees and Dubai Land Department, um, if they want to switch to the traditional route now that uh, the registration trustees are open, do, are you seeing this happen or do they have to continue down the first route that they were put on? Unfortunately, we never really got across the line with the banks adopting the digital route through the lands departments. They did trial runs and then suddenly the, the conditions were lifted anyway, and they've automatically reverted back to the traditional methods. So for, um, yeah, for, for the sales transactions with mortgages, it's the same, back to the same process now. And are you seeing like a bottleneck right now, just with the amount of transactions that are pending? A little, a little, but I mean, the, the banks are still operating. They're all working independently from home. They have been all the way th through. Things are slower. Um, so we'll see, hopefully, over the next month, things get up to the normal ratio of speed and get things through the, back to normal process times. Um, where, where normally you would expect for us to get a pre-approval in sort of three to five days would be the, the, the minimum length of time, sort of six to seven days now, generally. Um, so it's just about making your clients aware of the the processes and the timelines and every walk of life is affected at the moment so it's um, just managing expectations really.